think getting dumped by text is harsh. Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. The city of Cleveland celebrated the 30th annual Mayor's Night Out Against Crime, and we sent TV20 reporter Dan Monroe to Luke Easter Park to learn how the community and Cleveland safety forces are working together. Night Out Against Crime is all about, and it was organized originally, about building partnerships between the community and the police. As the sun went down behind the city of Cleveland skyline, Residents came out to Luke Easter Park to take part in a long-standing Cleveland tradition. Tonight was the 30th annual Mayor's Night Out Against Crime and the 34th annual National Night Out Against Crime. Events took place throughout Cleveland, including Steelyard Commons and Luke Easter Park. And as you can see, uh, it's a great event. People love it. And we believe it has have an impact as they creates a relationship between uh, the division of police and, and the public. Mayor Frank Jackson says the first step to stopping crime is community education. Crime is a symptom, and when you look at crime, something causes it. So it is, how do we work together as a community to address those core things that result in crime, whether it's, uh, whether it's wealth, education, job, you know, social service, whatever it may be. And we have to operate as one city in order to address that. Police Chief Calvin Williams agrees with the mayor and says it's also important to partner with the community to stop crime. Well, we can't do this without the public's help. And, uh, you know, as Robert Peel said in 1929, you know, the police are the community and the community are the police. So it's definitely a partnership between us and the community. Tonight's Night Out Against Crime was held in Cleveland's 4th Police District. Commander Brandon Cutts says this community is completely engaged with its police force. The uh, mayor told me when I came out here how engaged and active the community is, and man, he couldn't have been more accurate. I mean, we have uh, communities that are very well organized, they're engaged, um, they want to work with us, they want to, instead of uh, saying, you know, hey, Commander, we have a problem, it's, Commander, we have a problem, how can we work with you to solve it? Cleveland resident Tierra Smith told me she's afraid to speak with police officers. But tonight's event was eye-opening for her. It was an experience because I never talked to the police. I'm scared of the police. But it was fun. <laughs> Did you come away with a new outlook? Yeah, yes. Over in Steel Yard Commons, people are also connecting with members of Cleveland Safety Forces and learning how they can keep their families safe. We can all come together as a community. East Siders, West Sider, come together peacefully and actually learn about safety for these children. Um, they got name tags over here for identification. So it was a really great experience. Even for myself, I actually got a chance to touch a pipe bomb. It was it was detonated, but I got a chance to touch it. Um, we need to put you a can work your way up uh, here towards um, the stage, grab a seat, grip on crime because there's a year, lot of things going uh, on in Cleveland that um, and uh, you want to be able to that the sure community that you need to come a, together a and. Um, Take Chief Williams says the best way members of the community can help the police force is simply by speaking up. Definitely be a part of your community, be involved, and if you see something going on that doesn't look right, give us a call. Uh, because, you know, we're not out there everywhere, but our community is. So we need them to be our eyes and ears a lot of times, and give us a call, let us know what's going on. At Luke Easter Park for TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. Cleveland Public Power is making sure your porch light shines a little brighter this year. 
The city and Cleveland Public Power joined forces to walk through neighborhoods and go door to door passing out 10 watt energy efficient LED light bulbs. As you can see from this video, Mayor Jackson was meeting up with homeowners and handing them bulbs. The new LED bulbs are much brighter and will replace the old incandescent bulbs. The LED light giveaway was part of the mayor's Night Out Against Crime event, so now homeowners can put these bright bulbs on and light up their neighborhood to deter crime. We'd like everybody to light up their porch as part of the symbol of us fighting crime in the city of Cleveland. It's all about crime. It's about community. It's about how people uh, connect with each other. And, and the best way you fight crime uh, is to uh, people taking charge of their own community. We're going door to door. We're knocking on doors. We're handing out light bulbs. And we're going to ask our residents here in this community to turn on their lights with us as the mayor switches on the light on the stage for uh, Night Out Against Crime. We're going to ask our neighbors to turn on their lights. Lights on, crime gone is what we believe in. For more information on how you can get free LED light bulbs, call 216-664-3447. The Honorable Lauren Seymour, drug court judge at the Cleveland Municipal Courts, presided over the 55th graduation ceremony of the Greater Cleveland Drug Court. The program, which is overseen by Judge Moore, gives those with drug and alcohol offenses a chance to become clean and sober and to have their records expunged. Graduate Brittany Lynn Diekman says this program saved her life. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, I couldn't be more proud of myself. I put a lot of work into it, but this program saved my life. I was actually a heroin addict, and I got uh, petty theft, so I got caught stealing and um, got sent here. I mean, it saved my life. It did everything that I couldn't think of enough. Graduate Thomas Haywood was sober for 10 years until he hit a bump in the road and was sent to drug court. While difficult at first, Haywood says the program changed his life. When I first started, I did because I was like the oldest one in the class, and I thought, you know, this ain't for me. And I was very unhappy. But as the weeks went on, it was a pleasure being there. And it, uh, it, it's changed my life again. The keynote address was given by Senator Kenny Yuko of Ohio's 25th Senate District. Senator Yuko is proud to see these graduates are learning to make better choices for their lives. People who made the right choice. They decided to pick up their lives, turn it around, make things better. It's going to be a, a big change for not only the, the individuals themselves, but their, for their families, for the community, for everybody else involved. And it's kind of very, very exciting. You know, we're de dealing with an opioid crisis here in the state of Ohio and all over the country. And these people are bound and determined not to become part of that statistic. And they're to be commended for that and all the hard work they're putting themselves through. For more information on the Greater Cleveland Drug Court, visit clevelandmusicalcourt.org. Well, the City of Cleveland, the FBI, and the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department partnered up for a community youth and law enforcement forum. Hundreds of children and members of law enforcement gathered at Camp Forbes to talk about the challenges facing authorities and the community. Attendees were able to interact with police officers, sheriffs, SWAT team members, and others, plus learn about possible career opportunities. Organizers say their goal is to continue to expand the dialogue between law enforcement and the community because the youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow. Hopefully, you know, everyone's having a good time. I'm having a great time, uh, and we hope that the, uh, the kids here take away that, you know, law enforcement, we, we are your partners here. We are your friends. We are part of the community, and we want you to be able to depend on us and not be afraid of us. You know, we are all in this community together. For more information about the Youth and Law Enforcement Forum, call Tamara Larkin at 216-622-6691. The City of Cleveland's 2017 College Internship Program, which gave students an opportunity to gain first-hand experience working in government, came to a close. To celebrate, a luncheon was held at the City Hall Rotunda, where the students had a chance to take photos with Mayor Frank Jackson, who spoke words of encouragement. I want to encourage all of you to become public servants, even but just for a little while, even just for a little while, uh, because uh, uh, public service is an honorable profession. Now, you're not going to get rich. You're not going to make a lot of money, but it's an honorable profession. And those who do it and do it right 
have the greatest opportunity to impact the lives of individuals, families, communities in this city. So I would encourage you to come join us. Be a public servant, even if for a little while. Student Zachary Hunter tells us about his experience. I've interned with the city before. This is uh, going to be my third internship, and it's definitely the most rewarding. The majority of the interns that are working here at uh, City Hall are college students, and uh, you can learn a lot of things in the classroom, but being able to go and do something in a real-world setting uh, is much more valuable. Uh, I'm on myself, uh, I graduated from Cleveland State with a business degree, and we learned a lot of things about Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel, but having to take real properties and real values and use it in an office setting, is, it's more than valuable. It's, uh, it's something that you can't get in the classroom, and it's something that the city is offering here with the internship program. If you would like to learn more about the City of Cleveland's internship program, visit the City of Cleveland's website and tune in to TV20 to see the 2017 intern luncheon in its entirety. Check our schedule for times. The 10th Annual Army of Believers Scholarship Luncheon was held at the Renaissance Cleveland Hotel. This army is not like any army you might be thinking of, says Leo Serrano, Executive Director for Institutional Advancement with Cleveland Schools. Army of Believers started 10 years ago. Dr. Eugene Sanders was the CEO at the time. And he was in a meeting and somebody asked him, what do you need? What help do you need? And he ended up saying, really the biggest help we need is an army of believers. We need a whole bunch of people who will believe in our students and in what they're doing. At the luncheon, 16 CMSD students won a variety of college scholarships along with new MacBook Pros to take with them to college. Winning these scholarships is not about being the smartest. It's not based on GPA though. GPA is only one criteria because we, we're, we're, if it was just GPA, then we'd just say, hey, we got so many high schools, we'd just give it to the valedictorian. And, but it's based on service, extracurriculars. They have to write a unique essay of what the city means to them, and they have to have two letters of support, one from somebody in the school and somebody outside. Brendan Harvey was one of the scholarship recipients. A recent graduate of the Cleveland School of Science and Medicine, Harvey will use the scholarship to attend Baldwin Wallace University, where he'll major in fine arts and acting. It's, it's honestly a very good feeling to, to be surrounded by so much support and people that really want to see you go places. I think it's, it's good to show that our city's behind us and to remind us that we as a community can really move each other if we all come together like this. For more information on the Army of Believers, visit the Cleveland Metropolitan School District's website at clevelandmetroschools.org. We'll be right back with more TV20 News. Hi, I'm Mayor Frank Jackson. You've probably seen media coverage of the growing opioid epidemic in Northeast Ohio. But what you might not know is how many of these tragedies begin with a seemingly innocent prescription for pain medication. That is why we're teaming with the Cuyahoga County Opiate Marketing Task Force to encourage you to know the risk. Go to the website on your screen to learn which pills are opiates and alternative ways of dealing with pain, which starts as a prescription can end with addiction, so no the risk. You! Woo! I came just as soon as I heard the news. While you're enjoying that midnight snack, tune in to watch the best B-movies on Cleveland Classic Cinema. What began as a silly party given by an eccentric has now involved us all in murder. I Frank, I'm just scared. With host Nick D'Amico. It's always good to know that. Only on TV20. We are Cleveland. Welcome back to TV20 News. Mayor Frank Jackson's Neighborhood Job Corps successfully completed its first year and celebrated with a party. The Job Corps paid young men and women while they worked cleaning up neighborhoods. The initiative is run by Youth Opportunities Unlimited. Youth Opportunities Unlimited is an organization, nonprofit organization, that targets workforce development um, throughout the school year and summer employment in the Cleveland area. 
So we employed 73 youth to work in eight different communities throughout the city of Cleveland. And the purpose, of the, the purpose of the groups were to connect youth to one another, to their neighborhoods, and to the leaders in their communities so that they began to see themselves as leaders in their communities and connected to each other so they felt more responsible for their neighborhoods. During the celebration, groups presented how they spent their summer working for the betterment of their neighborhoods. Why? Why is for you? We, we serve kids breakfast and lunch and supervise them throughout the day. Oh, O stands for overcome. We face struggles that held us back, but we never fail to persevere. R is for responsibility, mentoring the kids to make better decisions in life. Dwayne Deskins, Cleveland's Chief of Intervention and Opportunity for Youth and Young Adults, attended the celebration and noticed a change in these young people from the first day he met them. I looked at what these kids did this summer, and I looked at what the summer did to these kids. And I think that that really is the change we want. The, 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 the improvements in the gardens and the, and the murals on the wall, they're all fine, they're all good. But the indelible mark that this program made on our kids, I think will last not only their lives, but our lives, and maybe the lives of this, the people of this city. And I think that that's really the heart of it. Just incredibly proud of these young people who really have changed their lives and changed our city, uh, and really have done so much to grow deeper in their relationships with the people in their neighborhoods. For more information on the Mayor's Neighborhood Job Corps, visit the Youth Opportunities Unlimited website at youthopportunities.org. The third annual Stop the Violence event was held at Arthur Woods Park at Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in Woodstock. The event has a basketball tournament, food, a school supply giveaway, music, and more. With no sponsorship backing, three hardworking friends came together to create the event. One of the gentlemen, Sharda Elmore, tells us why. We lost a lot of family members in the community, a lot of brothers, and we just trying to, we, we had three men coming that have been in the streets, that have been through the struggles. We are from three different neighborhoods, but we look at each other as brothers. And we just trying to bring the community together and made this event great. You know, a lot of people don't really, they go to college, don't never come back, don't never show no love, so it's just my idea to come back and get back to the hood, the place where I grew up from. Basketball brings a lot of people together, you know, the crowd, meet new people, socialize, you know, just have a little fun out here with everybody. Because we coming together, man, that, that's the main number one thing, to come together and show that, man, we, we can get together without violence, man, and that's basically it, man. And plus, we already having a good time. It's an example. It, it shows them how to, to, to be in a positive situation, a positive scenario, and, and we can come together, man. That's all it is, man. Because, you know, it's a lot of kids in the streets right now, and they don't really have anything to look up to or something. So that's why we have these kind of events to just bring us all together. If you would like to be involved in the fourth annual Stop the Violence, call 216-408-0771. They came to sell and shop, and it was all for a good cause. It was a special fundraiser to support the Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center and the Westside Alliance Church on Bridge Avenue. Vendors set up their tables around the church with new and slightly used products to sell. Organizers say fundraisers like this are vital for them to keep their social programs going. Very important because we need to raise funds to continue to support all the wonderful things that we do at the center. Uh, we have youth programming, we have dance classes, we do uh, art workshops, we do drumming workshops, we have um, a mentoring program for young girls 13 to 18, and we just we have really great events. We just came off of Fiesta Latina in the Square. We do the Latino Arts and Culture Celebration and the Puerto Rican Parade. We have a great uh, Christmas event that we do, so we, just, we do a lot of great stuff. If you would like more information on the Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center, you can email them at juliadeburgos at gmail.com or call 216-894-5664. Well, the sights and sounds of Puerto Rico will soon be traveling down the streets of the CLE. Last year's Puerto Rican parade traveled on the streets of downtown Cleveland, but this year the parade will travel along the city's west side on Clark and 53rd Street. Plus, there will be no festival afterwards. 
This year's parade is dedicated to three individuals who are pillars in the Hispanic community. The previous parades are different. Um, they have, we haven't been in the community for a very, a very long time, I believe over 12 years. Um, you know, and because we're dedicating the, the parade to these three individuals, it was really important for us to bring it back into the community that they served. So well, this year um, we just had some issues, um, a little bit of funding issues, but we will be back next year for our 50th anniversary strong. Remember, the Puerto Rican Day Parade will be Sunday, August 20th and will begin at 1 p.m. at the intersection of Clark and West 53rd Street. Thanks for watching TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.